Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a bias tool and make the bias adjustment. It's good to have a multimeter uh, nearby. And you're going to need two types of sockets. One like this that can hold a tube and fit your power tube. And then a regular socket that will fit inside it. Okay, we're going to put these two together to make our adapter. And you'll need one for each power tube and have a soldering iron ready and some extra wire. Now the first step, I'm going to take a drill with a drill bit big enough that two pieces of this wire can fit through it comfortably. Okay, and we're going to take our socket and you want to find where the number one pin is. Um, this is an octal socket which means it has eight plugs. Okay, then I'm going to drill out our socket right between the first and the eighth pin. Again, right between number one and number eight. I'm sorry about the blurriness here. My camera didn't do uh, close-ups quite as well as I thought it would. You need pieces of wire for each uh, pin that are long enough that they can connect to the socket and you'll have some coming out of the uh, male ends on the bottom socket. So just kind of make them a little longer than than what you think you'll need there. Give yourself a little extra room and make one for each pin. Except for the pin number eight which will have the wires attached to it. You can see here I've got some cut. Do enough for uh, both adapters or as for as many adapters as you have power tubes. And then I'm just going to crimp the little ends of this so that I can attach it to this uh, top socket. And just be mindful of which pin is number 8 so that you don't attach a wire to it. Uh, that's the one that we're actually going to test when we adjust the bias. But go ahead and put these on and solder them into place. Then when you're done, you should have something that looks uh, like this. And then go ahead and put a long piece of wire to the number 8 pin. Something long enough to come from the amp and reach out to your multimeter. Uh, you know, 1 to 2 feet uh, would be plenty. And then do this on both of them. And then take your bottom socket, and where you've drilled that little hole, you want to put another length of uh, wire around and put it through the number 8 pin on this socket as well. Now the idea here is to just fold it over and stick it right through that, that pin that's made into the socket. Typically those are hollow, and you can put the wire through them. You can see how it's going to come out of the other end there. And then just pull it tight so it doesn't get in the way of any other wiring. Pull it out there. And then do that on the other side. And note in this view there are shadows that you're seeing there. There's only one wire coming out of each socket at this time. Okay, now take your top sockets. And we're going to take the wire from that and feed it through the hole as well. And you can mark these to make sure that you know which one's top and bottom. It's not really that important. But then go ahead and line up these wires that you have from the top socket and put them into each one of those pins in the bottom socket so that the whole socket and those wires will come through. And each wire comes through its appropriate um, pin there. And then just sort of clamp it down together. Squeeze those in there. Make sure that nothing's touching anything else. Make sure those wires are coming out. And you don't have any excess wire inside there. And then just to make sure that nothing got bent, um, it's good just to take an ohm meter 
and test and make sure that none of the uh, wires are having contact with any of the other wires. Just sort of work your way around a wire at a time and make sure that nothing's uh, got a circuit going through it. That everything should be unattached to anything else. And then go ahead and just solder the very ends of those pins so that the wire is actually soldered to that little plug. And then you want to go ahead and take out your um, power tubes from the amplifier. Make sure that it's not plugged in. You don't have any electricity going on here. And we're going to remove these two power tubes. I use a little cloth just to keep fingerprints and stuff from getting on the tubes. And you may have to squeeze those clamps up and pull out your tube. Just be very careful with these. And then go ahead and install the adapters. Make sure your pin locations are right. If you have to mark where the number one pin is, that's fine too. Some of those sockets will have a notch that will tell you which pin it is. Then go ahead and put your power tubes back in. And also note here, uh, you may want to take out the speaker baffle. It, sometimes it's a little easier to get to the bias pot if you go ahead and remove that front panel. Because the bias pot is sort of back in between there. Uh, between the two transformers. Okay, then uh, get your voltmeter ready. And we're going to measure the milliamps. So have some alligator clips uh, ready to go and set your voltmeter to the milliamp setting. Um, usually they'll have like a 200 milliamp setting. That's typically where you'll want to be. Okay. Right now we have no power. Just make sure everything's set properly. And then we're going ahead and put power to the amplifier. And then we can go ahead and turn the amp on. And you want to take a reading from each tube. Just put your uh, voltmeter on each one. Go back and forth. Record these measurements. And it's just a matter of adjusting that uh, bias pot until your readings are about the same. Get them as close as you can. They're not going to be perfect. And depending on your actual voltage, you're going to get numbers anywhere from 40 to 60 milliamps typically somewhere in that range. You can get down in the low 30s. Uh, 